Hello Josh. And hello Imogen of course. And hello to any other children who are following the stories of the three railway engines. This is the last story in the book and it's called Edward, Gordon and Henry. It's about all three of them. Edward and Gordon often went through the tunnel where Henry was shut up. Edward would say, peep, peep, hello. And Gordon would say, poop, poop, serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoilt his lovely green paint and red stripes. He was cold and unhappy, and he wanted to come out and pull trains too. Gordon always pulled the express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do it. There were many heavy coaches, full of important people like the fat director who had punished Henry. Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, 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 he panted. Trickety trot, trickety trot, said the coaches. Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in front. In a minute, he thought, I'll poop, poop, poop at Henry and rush through and out into the open. Closer and closer he came, and he was almost there when crack, whoosh! He was in a cloud of steam and going slower and slower. I think he's coming to a stop. His driver stopped the train. What has happened? said Gordon. I feel so weak. You've burst your safety valve, said the driver. You can't pull the train anymore. Oh dear, said Gordon. We were going so nicely too. Look at Henry laughing at me. Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Everybody got out and came to see Gordon. Humph, said the fat director. I never like these big engines. Always going wrong. Send for another one at once. While the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon and they ran him on a siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. I'll come and try, he said. Gordon saw him coming. That's no use, he said. Edward can't pull the train. Edward puffed and pulled and pulled and puffed, but he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so, said Gordon rudely. Why not let Henry try? Yes, said the fat director. I will. Will you help pull this train, Henry? he asked. Yes, said Henry, at once. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire. Some plate layers broke down the wall and put back the rails. And when he had steam up, Henry puffed out. <gasps> there he is. He was dirty, his boiler was black, and he was covered with cobwebs. Oh, I'm so stiff, he groaned. You'd better have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable, said the fat director kindly. Henry came back feeling much better, and they put him in front. Peep, peep, said Edward. I'm ready. Peep, 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 said Henry. So am I. Pull hard, pull hard, puffed Edward. We'll do it, we'll do it, puffed Henry. Pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it, they puffed together. And the heavy coaches jerked and began to move, slowly at first, and then faster and faster. We've done it together, we've done it together, said Edward and Henry. You've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, sang the coaches. You see, all three of them. All the passengers were excited. The fat director leaned out of the window to wave to Edward and Henry, but the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat ate it for his tea. They never stopped till they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers all got out and said, thank you, and the fat director promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like blue and red? Yes, please, said Henry. Then I'll be like Edward. Edward and Henry went home quietly, and on their way they helped Gordon back to the shed. All three engines are now great friends. Wasn't Henry pleased when he had his new coat? He's very proud of it, as all good engines are, but he doesn't mind the rain now, because he knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run into tunnels, but to ask his driver to rub him down when the day's work is over. And there you are. And there 
is the station where all the engines have met up. Isn't that lovely? And that's the end of that book about the three railway engines. But I will be back with another one soon. Bye for now.